Liz Honeyford is the Executive Director of Healing Care Canada. Liz established the ministry in 2018 after receiving healing and encouragement herself through the founding ministry in Ohio under Dr. Terry Wardle's leadership. Healing Care Canada is where many people and churches have been transformed through small groups, spiritual direction, and our seminars. Welcome to the show, Liz. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Um, let's start with the very personal life experience that brought you to become the executive director of Healing Care Canada. Um, yeah, that's a that's a hard one to answer for me. I, I would I would say birth, um, <laughs> just being born into a world that uh, wasn't quite sure what to do with me. And wow. so um, I'm a survivor of childhood trauma. And uh, I have great coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. I learned early how to uh, how to live in this world. Um, I met Jesus at 14, but I had well established, you know, uh, functional behaviors at that point that that kept me moving. And uh, I call into ministry, but still continuing on as I knew only knew how to survive in this world. It's very and, uh, it Sorry, I just, I thought it was very interesting. You said you had, you developed great coping mechanisms. It's so true. I find that in my own life, what I went through is you, you learn these great coping mechanisms, but it's not, it's not positive. It's not the way we should be living. Uh, no, it's, it actually eventually creates, um, you know, dysfunction in relationships and certainly in, in ministry, it leads to breakdown emotionally and mentally. And so that would be what kind of led me into uh, you know, I was invited into this program in 2008. I was a, a pastor of a church north of Toronto and, uh, you know, just significant ministry in life, but it was just coming to the end of, man, there's got to be more than this. I, I'm not going to make it. Wow. And I uh, was invited into Pastors of Excellence. And one of the first things they showed us in this uh, course uh, was this iceberg. Hmm. And you know, they drew an iceberg on the board. I'll never forget it. And how the top part of the iceberg, you know, the, with the water line, the top part is our competencies, our ways of coping. But it's only 10% that you see of an iceberg, but 90% is below the water line. <laughs> and, and, and most of us are not paying attention to what is going on beneath the surface of our lives. Wow, that is so true. That's an excellent example. I never really thought mm -hmm. about that. Very helpful for me. Yeah, our, our our culture is always talking about self love for and love for others and how to be content and or healed. What is that truly? Well, I think you can only really talk about contentment by looking at the the life of Jesus, and I can tell you what it isn't. You know, contentment is not a detachment from emotions mm. because Jesus <laughs> Jesus had every emotion from anger to to, to agony to uh to disappointment to sadness you know feeling forsaken by god why have you forsaken me so contentment is not this sort of buddhist idea of of being detached from our emotions i'm so glad rather, you said that because i'm very emotional <laughs> go on <laughs> well there that's you know it, it the thing is is but it's how do how do we deal with those emotions right what, what is what are my emotions telling me about me and about what i really believe about God and about the world. Um, am I safe? You know, am I, am I okay to come forward as my true self? And so I think, you, you know, we have to look at Jesus for that and, and to see that. So I think when Paul says, you know, I've learned to be content, you know, it, it, you have to learn it. But, but Paul had had this incredible encounter with Jesus where he could actually say for me to live, um, you know, is Christ to die is gain. He, he was in a place where he really had nothing to lose. And I think that's, there's something about contentment there when I've got nothing to lose because I, I've experienced the, the love of God, that the God who is trustworthy, the God who shows up for me, the God who parents me, <laughs> the God who does have my, my back and my best interest at heart. Absolutely. Well, I want to bring Mike on, and, and I know he's got something you want to ask you yeah, for so sure. Liz, um, you know, in the church that I pastor, we've already been impacted by your ministry, and we're grateful for that. Uh, as you talked about your coping mechanisms when you were younger, and then you were leading ministries as you got farther along, um, yeah. my question is, um, how did you fake it? And, you know, how did you address it when it really came 
to light in your own life? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say I was faking it. Uh, I was treading water um, as well as anybody else. And, you know, the Holy Spirit, uh, he, anoints, he anoints us uh, for the sake of others, you know, out of love for, for others. And so it wasn't so much faking it as I didn't know. I, I didn't know that there was a world beneath the surface that Jesus wanted to be with. He, he wanted to be with me. I didn't know the me that he wanted to be with. So as, I, you, as you came to the I place had, of breakthrough, yeah. was there a couple specific things that happened to you that, that God just kind of brought into your awareness? Well, yeah, this idea that there is a, a world going on beneath the surface of my life that is crying for attention. Uh, that was that was a big eye opening to me. And then that there was a pathway forward that many had walked this path before towards saying uh, no to 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 a kind of shallow Christianity or or a ministry where you actually you know die in the process of it, as, as opposed to finding this abiding rest in what Jesus has already done for me. And letting him live his life through me. Right. That's a huge statement uh, to say we want him to live his life mm -hmm. through us. And, and really, that's part of the journey. If you had something to share with people just kind of as a final close today, um, what would that be today? Uh, that there is hope. There is hope for, for you as a, as a pastor, as a leader, as a believer. There's hope for you to experience the 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 love of God in a real possible way in a real way within your bones and your body there is a way to be healed and healthy and to experience contentment and I think contentment is the the outflow it's the result of intimacy with Jesus thank you so and, much oh I you had got another point Lee. go ahead no please. just I, I could talk forever so. oh. <laughs> thank you so much Liz for joining us uh, those are very important words to share with us, and I know it's a constant encouragement. So wonderful to have you on the show. I hope we have her back again. Mm -hmm. Your work is ins inspirational, Liz, and stay with us. The Word with Mike is next.